coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. It's hard for me to be joyful sometimes when I'm watching judges strip away health care rights from people over and over and over again. I'm seeing them strip away voting rights. The people of Florida voted over by 64% that people who have gone to jail should get their right to vote when they got out, but the lawmakers still stripped them of the right to vote. It's hard to be joyful like that when you got all of these things going on, criminal investigations, rights being removed and all the saints want to talk about is the price of a pastor's wife's car. Rejoice in the Lord always again, I say rejoice. Yes, sir. Uh, four verses that are full of power, but just, just small, but it's packed full of power like a protein bar. There's so much that is in there. Rejoice in the Lord always again, I say rejoice. Y'all been around me long enough to notice that sometimes I have various facial expressions going on. I may not say anything, but there will be different things going on in my face. It's not necessarily about what's going on at the moment. I might be thinking about something else, but it'll be on my face. And my son used to walk up to me when he thought I wasn't in a good mood, and he'd tell me, Daddy, be happy. Be happy, Daddy, because he wanted to see a smile on my face. Uh, uh, we, we are often concerned about being happy. Uh, Bobby McFerrin had the song a while back, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Uh, now we live our best lives, and we don't go back and forth with you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, you'll get that on the way home. Just spend a little time on 97.9, uh, 93. The B and, and, and the first part of the song is smile. Yep. Yeah. We are overly concerned about being happy. And even if we're not concerned about being happy, we're concerned about faking it. Somebody asks you, how you doing? You automatically say fine, even if everything's not fine. Oh, we get super spiritual with it. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm blessed and highly favored in the Lord. That's about what's going on, but not necessarily about your emotional state. Uh, there was a study that was done by a group called Happify, a, a website that uh, a website and an app that develops games and activities based on scientific research into happiness, and it says that if you're younger. Uh, it, it says rather that according to them, they say that if you're ever going to be happy, the prime age to be happy is 58 years old. Uh, the study was conducted over this time by Happify, and, and, and they based it on happiness. And so if you're younger than 58, there is something to look forward to. Uh, but if you're older than 58, it doesn't mean that you missed the happy year. That's because according to the research, happiness increases after 58. Amen. Uh, as you age beyond 58, it said that the study found that most people are pretty happy by the time they turn 18. But then the happiness takes a dip in the middle years and bottoms out around 53. And at that point, things start to look up again. And by the time they get to 58, they're gaining more traction. Uh, but there's a lot of qualifiers that they found in the research. Uh, first, the research is talking about an average age uh, when happiness seems to take hold. And second, uh, uh, personal troubles can override happiness at any age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, beyond that, there's the matter that people seem to live longer, seven and a half years longer than on average. So naturally, when the investigations looked at the happiness level of the oldest people in the study, or around about 85 years of, of age, they were looking at a, de uh, a demographic in which many of the uh, unhappy people weren't represented properly. Uh, but the bad, it's not a bad thing to know that your happiest years are still to come. Uh, one reason that they say that they, uh, the, the happiness comes in the senior years is because the study in, uh, suggests that once you get to about that age, you start to enjoy the normal things, the wow. stuff that people who are younger take for granted. Yes. Spending time with your family, yes. uh, having your health, having some peace in your home. Another thing that they notice, the reason why some of those people are happier than those who are younger than them is because they're retired. Mm -hmm. All right. And so they have freedom to do what they want to do instead of having to punch a clock and do what somebody else wants them to do. But as have, but regardless of your age, if you're not as happy as you'd like to be, there are plenty of, they say, self-help books and sites like Happy Fi that are ready to tell you how to increase your overall happiness. But Paul was telling us how to increase our overall joy, which I would say is more than happiness during the time that he was writing to the church at Philippi, which we call the book of Philippians. But I would argue it's kind of hard to rejoice sometimes. It's kind of hard to rejoice sometimes when I open up a newspaper or I go to a news website and I see a young man who, who raped another young man, uh, another young woman rather, raped her and not have to serve any jail time. Yes. Get years of probation and pay a $400 fine even though he ruined another young woman's life. He, he, he doesn't have to go to any jail. He doesn't have to do anything except probation and pay the fine. And then I flip over to the next page and I see a young woman who was sold into human trafficking kill her buyer to escape a life of human trafficking and only and have to serve possibly 51 years before they can get that. It's kind of hard for me to be joyful sometimes when I see some things like that. It's hard for me to be joyful sometimes when I'm watching judges strip away health care rights from people over and over and over again. I'm seeing them strip away voting rights. The people of Florida voted over by 64% that people who have gone to jail should get their right to vote when they got out, but the lawmakers still stripped them of the right to vote. It's hard to be joyful like that when you got all of these things going on, criminal investigations, rights being removed, and all the saints want to talk about is the price of a pastor's wife's car. It's hard to be joyful sometimes. Doesn't mean I'm not going to be joyful. I'm just saying it's hard okay. that we get focused on some of the wrong things. Yeah. I spent an entire Saturday while I was passing out food to the homeless, talking to my frat brothers, and all anybody wanted to talk about was a $200,000 Lamborghini. Oh, wow. And I'll say here what I said to them. Yeah. He's not going to hurt from that. But that's going to hurt the little pastors that are trying to make ends meet at smaller places because the people will look at what he did and then try to punish somebody else for that. Ah, yeah. well, pastor, uh, uh, Jesus was poor. That ain't really what the Bible say. I mean, I could talk about how the Greek word for master, uh, for carpenter that they used for Joseph and Jesus was tecton, and that's a master carpenter. I can talk about how they went from being born in a manger in Luke to being in a house when the wise men came to get him, and the, the wise men brought gold to him. I could, I could talk about that. Ah, uh, well, they don't need no car like that. Jesus rode a donkey. Ah, uh, well, I could exegete that as well. And you go back to the Old Testament, and kings rode on donkeys. But we get focused on the wrong things. And when we get focused on the wrong things, it robs our joy. 
I was listening to a podcast uh, uh, the other day and it was talking about that comparison is the thief of joy. When you are constantly worried about what somebody else is doing and you're always trying to keep up with the Joneses and you don't understand what the Joneses had to go through to get that and even while it looks nice, there's a cost that they're paying all the time and they would let these things, as my grandma say, get up on your table. Uh, take food off your plate because you're worried about taking care of those things and you're trying to reach that status and it's robbing your joy. Comparison is a thief of joy. But rejoice in the Lord always. Why do we rejoice in the Lord always during this Advent season? We rejoice in the Lord not only during this Advent season, but always because the Lord is coming. Uh, the Lord is at hand. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. That had a double meaning to it. It meant that Jesus was coming. And you needed to be as a believer prepared for the return of Jesus. But it also meant that what, what we were doing for Jesus was not only that he was coming, but he was here. Yeah. Right now. And so the Lord is coming. The Lord is at hand. We prepare for a soon coming king, but we also prepare for a king that is always around us. Even when our friends forsake us and our family forgets us, the Lord is always around. The Bible says that there is one who sticks closer than a brother. Rejoice in the Lord always because the Lord is at hand. Tell your problems to Jesus and guaranteed it won't come back to you. Rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord is at hand. When Jesus said that the kingdom of God was at hand, again, that double meaning is both coming and it's here. It's already here and it's not yet. It's both and then of the same. And so it's coming, but it's also what is within arm's reach of you. There's stuff around you that you can be doing to make yourself a better person. There's stuff around you that you could already be doing to make yourself a better Christian. There's stuff around you that you can already be doing to bring people to Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The Lord is at hand. He says, don't be anxious for anything, but, uh, but uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So when you are anxious, the best solution is to pray. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. He'll hear the faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. How many of you know that having a little talk with Jesus will make it all right? Rejoice in the Lord always. And Paul has the, he, if anybody could be saying this and it means something, it's got to be the Apostle Paul. Because while he is writing this letter to the church folk, he is writing it from jail. Paul is a part of the prison pen pal program as he pens a passage to his parish. He's in jail. All right. he, this, being a Christian was not fun during the times that they were writing these okay. passages. Folks were getting thrown to lions and dipped in boiling oil and crucified upside down and getting beat with stones. There wasn't no nice building for them to come every Sunday for an hour and a half and hear some singing and put a little money in the plate. These people got killed for hundreds of years and Paul was writing from prison. He was going city to city trying to tell people about Jesus and they would beat him up. He had a thorn in his side that he kept talking about. He asked the Lord to remove three times, but it still was there. He was getting beat over and over again and arrested. And he, while he was getting arrested, said rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. So if he can say rejoice in the Lord always while he's getting beat up and put in jail over and over again, I think I can go through some of the little problems that I have throughout my life. I can push through them and keep putting one foot in front of the other because I can go through those things and know that if Paul can rejoice, I can rejoice. 
Ah, the word that leaps out of the passage is rejoice, especially here because he's writing from prison and, and, and to a community that is experiencing opposition to their Christian beliefs. Nevertheless, Paul still told them to rejoice. Indeed, the joy word appears 16 times in a four chapter book. Over and over again, Paul's joy, and half the time referring to Paul's joy, and half the time referring to the joy of the Lord. But the, the word that they use for rejoice can also mean farewell. Okay. And so he's saying, farewell, I wish you all joy in the Lord. Again, I'll say it again, all the joy is yours. Amen. Because the joy is not dependent upon happy, uh, uh, what's going on externally. You can make somebody happy, but it'll only be for a little while. You can make somebody happy. You can put some money in their pocket. You can compliment them. You can do a whole bunch of things for them, but the happiness is temporary. The joy that he was talking about was the, the one who was and is and is to come. The one who was there at the beginning with the word and the word was God and the word was with God. The one who the word became flesh and came to dwell among us. That never changes. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there is something about that name Jesus so if there's something you can fix your joy to if there's something that you can hold on to it's Jesus weeping may endure for a night but joy shall come in the morning many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver you from them no weapon formed against you shall prosper those are the things you hold on to not whether or not somebody likes you not whether or not you got some money in your pocket. Not whether or not you got the job that you wanted yet. You hold on to Jesus because all that fades away. Yes, it does. Thank you, Lord. And if you don't think it fades away, watch how fast they replace you when you're gone. I saw somebody say uh, it's okay to take off from work here and there because if you died, your job position would be on the net before your obituary would. What's making us happy? And so he says to rejoice in the Lord. Fare thee well in the Lord. I wish you all the joy in the Lord. And he leaves us these, these, these things to, be, to, uh, to let us know. And then he talks about the gentleness that goes on. And it's a, related to a verb that's translated into English to yield, to give away, to draw back, to retire. Let your gentleness be known to everyone can, uh, uh, carries with it the condemnation of a deliberate strategy of adaptability and accommodation to the needs of those around you. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone means that y'all the church, you got to be taking care of the people around you. Amen. 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 My, the, the, the amens went away. <laughs> Got a little quiet in here. We start talking. Yeah, we talk about joy in the Lord, but now we're talking about taking care of the community. They got amen lights, amen fan, amen podium. Mm. It's difficult for some of us to understand what's going on because these people were talking about, when Paul was talking about what was going on, he was talking about people that were living under a king, a Roman Caesar that was running everything and they thought that this kingdom of God that was being brought up was, a, was in direct opposition to the kingdom that they had set up. And so it's easier for them to understand when he talks about rejoicing in the Lord and, and Jesus is Lord and calling somebody Lord. They, not used, they weren't used to that at that time because Caesar was supposed to be Lord. But Caesar will not get you into heaven. Caesar did not die for your sins. Yes, Caesar did not wear a crown of thorns for you. Caesar did not take a beating with a cat of nine tails for you. So when they were talking about this Jesus is Lord and rejoicing in the Lord, they're talking about Jesus, but it was a rival to the system. But we still need to rejoice 
in the Lord always. We need to pray. When we're anxious, pray. When we're sick, pray. When we're lonely, pray. When we can't get along with somebody, pray. When we don't know what kind of decision to make, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Don't just pray one time. Continually pray. Just like you can't eat one salad and get healthy. You can't get on the treadmill one time and be healthy. You got to keep doing that over and over again. And just like you got to keep doing that over and over again, you need to be praying over and over again. Let your requests multiple, plural, over and over again, be made known to God. Uh, We ought not be content with a self-centered joy, but we should have a joy that is seen by the world for everyone to accommodate those around us. Reverend uh, Dr. Jamie Clark Soul said it time and time again, you can't be a Christian outside of community. If your Christian experience focuses solely on what you do for an hour and a half on Sunday, on what some of y'all, even less of y'all do once a, a week on a Wednesday or a Monday or a Tuesday, that is not all that we are supposed to be doing. Let it be known around us all. And the peace that passes all understanding we will be able to guard our hearts and our minds. This will allow us to stand firm. This will allow us to get our total well-being in everything. This will allow us to work for the Lord and not under man. Yes. Yes. Because when we are confident in who we are, we, we are understanding who we are in Christ, there will be nothing that can take our joy. Amen. When we are confident in who we are, and whose we are, there'll be nothing that can take our joy. Ah, it's interesting uh, that there are New, New Testament uh, uh, scholars and Old Testament scholars that, uh, uh, well, that, that talk about the, the, the English word in the Old Testament as well, uh, Asher, or Asher. Uh, A-S-H-E-R because the word in the Hebrew and the Greek for the word that they use, they can't, uh, they can't debate on, the, well, they, there is a debate, rather, on whether or not the word means happy or blessed. One word being used over and over again. But they can't understand, they can't figure out whether or not it means happy or blessed. So I would say it's both. We rejoice in the Lord always because we are blessed. We rejoice in the Lord always because we are blessed. But we are not only blessed, but we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. I remember in uh, uh, Genesis 12 when Abram, uh, before he became Abraham, was told to get out of his country and that he would make his name great amongst the nations. And he said that he would bless them, bless Abraham. But he also said that he would be a blessing. So we get this joy in the Lord. We ought not keep it to ourselves. Uh, Bishop Benjamin used to say all the time, if there is joy in your heart, don't keep it a secret from your face. But this joy that we have, this risen savior, this soon coming king, this prince of peace, this wonderful person, this counselor, this everlasting father, this Mary's baby, this wheel in the middle of the wheel, this Gideon's fleece, this battle axe, this rose of Sharon, this good shepherd, we are not keep it for ourselves. He didn't go to the cross just for us to keep it to ourselves. He didn't die on the cross just for us to keep it by ourselves. He didn't rise up on the third day just for ourselves. We are supposed to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for everybody. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Thank you for listening to this message. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you found this message. If this message blessed you, 
be a blessing to someone else and share it. Connect with Pastor Johnny on Instagram and Twitter, and be sure to like Faith UMC Dickinson on Facebook. 